When we're talking about flagships in 2023, we have to be a little bit more specific about what makes a device a flagship, but even more specific about what differentiates this specific flagship amongst the other sea of flagships that we have. Nowadays in 2023, we have a lot of devices that have already been released, and we're still technically in the second quarter, the beginning of the second quarter of 2023. So today we're going to talk about the Honor Magic 5 Pro. This is Honor's flagship for the beginning of the year, and one of the biggest things that we have to take a look at is what makes this device unique. I've had the device since MWC, and finally it's available now in Hong Kong and the UK, so I figured why not go ahead and drop the review for this device and share my thoughts about how I feel about Honor devices and also what makes these so specifically exciting for me. This is TK, let's go ahead and review the Honor Magic 5 Pro. <music> Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here's the package. The Honor 5 Pro box. We have a clear case. We have the 66 watt charger. We also have a USB-A to USB-C cable that's included in the box. So we have the charger and a case so you're pretty much set to go. And we also have a screen protector. Now, the version of the device that I have here is the meadow green color, and then there is the black. The black one is a little bit more uh, reflective, as more of a mirror finish. And of course, uh, this one, is, as you can see here, definitely looks really nice, almost like a moss green, but it definitely fits that nice color that we have. We have the IMUs with triple camera sensors on the back, triple 50 megapixel cameras specifically, wireless charging, 5100 milliampere battery that is supported again with the 66 wires wired charging, as well as the ability of doing wireless charging uh, on this device. Uh, but again, very nice, very simple, gets you ready out of the box. And of course, you could definitely get other cases, but you're protected right out of the box and you have the chargers in the box. Now, if we're looking at the front of the display, we're looking at a 6.81 inch. So basically a 6.8 inch display. It's an LTPO quad curve display that gives us the ability of seeing that nice little curvatures. And the curvatures are actually not very pronounced. So they're not very sharp, but it definitely provides us that nice little aesthetic look that we normally love to see. 120 frames per second with QHD resolution and HDR10 plus with DCI-P three uh, calibration for the color gamut that we have in here. Touch sensitivity, as you notice, the fingerprint sensor is a little bit low uh, by comparison to some of the other devices. You just have to remember that it's sitting on the bottom. It's very responsive. Uh, the camera stack on the front, we notice that we have a front facing camera for, well, essentially intended for face unlock. So I can go ahead and bring the device. It sees my face right away. I don't have to touch the fingerprint sensor and it works. And it surprisingly works even in dim lit uh, experiences where I tried it where it was a totally pitch dark room. As long as the device display brightens up a little bit, it was able to see me and it unlocked the device. Google Play services pre-launched in here. Again, this is the UK model, as we saw with the charger. And of course, Google, well, we have the Google feed sitting on the left. And of course, the other application side. Uh, swiping down, you have the notification panel, all the different areas that you have the ability of customizing. Now, middle swipe in the screen opens up directly into the search. There is no way of setting it up so that it opens up the notification panel. That's part of how Magic OS uh, is set up. So it's running Magic OS 7.1 on top of Android 13. And the model number that I have is the PGT N9, what, N19. Again, Honor Magic 5 Pro. And of course, uh, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powering this device. And of course, we have 12 gigs of RAM with the ability of expanding it with uh, basically adding up the seven gigabytes of internal storage into it. The model that I have is has 512 gigs of internal storage. And again, the resolution that I have right now is 2848 by 1312. And we're able to set that directly within the settings. And what I mean by this is we're able to go into the resolution side, configure it to be more of a standard, kind of closer to the 1080p, and of course, low closer to the 720p to be able to save some battery. Now, you are also able to turn on smart resolution and the device will automatically jump between the different options. Same thing with the refresh rate. We have standard running at 60 and of course, medium at 90 and of course, high at 120. Or you can also set it up to be dynamic and that also also helps a little bit with more running as far as uh, saving some battery for you. Uh, we have the ability of turning on video enhancer, frame rate booster, as well as more display options directly all within the display brightness. Dark mode is supported and of course the ability of customizing the timing for it. Uh, you can log in with your Honor ID, customizing all the different options biometric. We do have the Yo-Yo Assistant built into this. Uh, this is starting to be something that Honor is keeping in their devices outside of China. So we're starting to see that as well. Uh, you don't have to use it. The Google Assistant is definitely very nice and built in here. You can still use it by pressing holding the power button. And of course, uh, customizing your experience and downloading all the applications that you'd like. The big thing I want to talk to you guys about overall what we're getting here with Magic OS. Magic OS 7.1 features a lot of optimization, security features, and some of the options that I really enjoy about this is the ability of customizing the performance of my device. And this is something that we've seen in the past. I can scroll down, go directly down into the battery section, and I'm also able to turn on performance mode. 
Now, what that essentially means is that the phone doesn't really run at 100%. That we're not using the full potential of the HN2 all the time. But if you do, you're able to turn that on. And of course, that does consume more battery, but it gives you the performance that you need. If you're rendering video, if you're if you're trying to basically do something that is more taxing on the system, you definitely want to turn that on. Or if you're using game mode, you're able to also toggle that on in performance mode in the game settings. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Now, Conversely, if you want to flip it over and you want to be able to save battery, this is also the area you'll be able to do that and turning on by power saving mode, which as you can see here is projected up to 50 hours uh, remaining as opposed to the 36 that we have in there. Wireless reverse charging as well. The ability of seeing the uh, reusing our battery to be able to charge other devices from this device is also very nice. So a lot of optimizations done in here. You can customize the entire option. Again, you log it into your account directly, uh, it customizes the experience based on the region that you're in. Now I'm using this in the US and I am using it on uh, basically an eSIM service called Eralo. Now, if you're not familiar with them, that's a different video, but the big thing that I love about this is the ability of being able to use them in the US is that you're gonna be expecting speeds around the 142, 114, and 88. So this is running on T-Mobile. Again, it says LTE on all of the three connections. We're running 4G. Uh, one thing to mention, I don't. I know a lot of us listen and we hear the word 5G and we need 5G. 5G technology is great, but for most of the 5G technology that all of us use in the US is sub six. And sub six technology, it's considered to be somewhat around along the same line of speed that you get with 4G LTE, at least the way it is right now. Now, one thing to keep in mind, obviously, this is intended for different markets. So as long as you're getting one freer area of where you're intended to be, you're definitely not going to have any problems. I'm pretty sure you guys want to know what the Geekbench score is on this. Obviously, I ran Geekbench 6. We're running 1922. And again, this is in performance mode, 5248 for the multi-core. And this is, again, it's an HN2. There is no question. This is going to fly through almost everything that you're going to do. Now, this is what actually kind of gets us into the camera experience and what makes this device a unique flagship. Now, what I talked to you guys about at the beginning is that we have the triple 50 megapixel cameras in the back. The design is absolutely fantastic. Up to 100 times zoom, again, digital zoom combination of uh, with optical. But overall, what we're getting here is a camera experience that we've come to love and enjoy with Honor. The camera processing, the color processing that we've seen before, it's definitely very much here. We have the ability of using AI processing, uh, going obviously ultra wide, main camera wide. 3.5 is gonna be the telephoto. And of course, this is a hybrid zoom type of it where it basically takes uh, both the telephoto and starts optimizing. Of course, your sharpest images are gonna be based on the first three. Now, if I wanna be able to basically switch between the two, I can also turn on the dial here and this works the way you expect it, all the way up to 100. The biggest thing I will probably say is the experiences that you're gonna get the best of obviously are gonna be in this area in video, which is one of the things that makes this device unique. A lot of manufacturers that come out of China that necessarily don't focus so much on the front facing camera. And what I mean by this is when we talk about video performance and what you're able to do, this device can shoot 4K 60 frames per second maximum on the main camera. But when I flip it over to the front, we're not capped at 1080p. We are jumping at 4K 30 frames per second. 4K recording on both the front and on the back is an absolute game changer, especially from a region that's known for keeping their front facing cameras at 1080p. This is a big thing for people that like to vlog, record content, edit them and get everything done. This device will do it for you. We obviously have movie mode, gives us the ability of customizing it, as well as the ability of shooting in log. And this is what they're calling magic log. This is something that uh, Honor is putting in there to be able to allow us to shoot video in more of a log format. Now, what I mean by log, if you've never heard of this before, let's go ahead and turn this on. This is a video shot in log. It looks stale, it looks a little bit pale, it doesn't look like there's any good color, it all looks like there basically is a massive overcast. This is what the video looks like when it's shot in normal. And this is something that I've applied a little bit of a LUT on it. A LUT is basically a preset that allows us to customize the color. What I love about this is on this device, I'm able to turn it on, click edit, jump in here, and now look at how I'm able to process it. I jump in into the LUT experience, jump all the way down, and I think this is nostalgia if I'm not mistaken, or eh, actually, yeah, it was a little bit more, sorry, it was pure. And I'm also able to customize the level of appliance. So now the video goes from looking like it was just bad lighting and just not really bad composition to be able to look really good on the device. And I'm able to export this and post it to a YouTube channel right away. Now, obviously this isn't intended necessarily just to be done on device. This is obviously intended to be edited in, let's say Premiere, Adobe, um, you know, After Effects, not After Effects, but like say your video editor on your PC to be able to do color rating on it. A big difference and big performance change that from what we've seen in the past on Honor devices. But I enjoyed this really good. And of course we also have the ability of jumping into macro. We'll, come, we'll jump into the color, uh, sorry, the performance there. Slow motion, panorama, time-lapse, stickers, super macro is what I was showing you just a second ago, multi-video, you know, front and back camera, high resolution, full readout of the 50 megapixel camera, 
documents can, and of course, uh, stories more of a, think of it like a TikTok editor or an Instagram reel editor. It's built in, uh, built in options to be able to create stories. Uh, they're not intended to be in uh, nine, by nine by 16, it's more by 16 by nine. So you have to keep in mind the experience here is slightly different. Uh, but of course we have portrait night mode and of course aperture to be able to change the f-stop uh, basically customizing the bokeh on this device but the biggest thing i also want to say before we go too far is that little running guy that's sitting on the side here and i want to say this specifically because this is essentially called the motion sensing capture on this is a an auto mode that's built into the camera that allows you to actually capture moving subjects in really good quality also it actually does it automatically which makes it so crazy and cre I'm not saying creepy but like really crazy good I'm going to share with you guys a couple of pictures right now. And this is a couple of pictures of my son. I want to I want to be more specific about this. So I was trying to capture my son using the shutter button and trying to catch this son, uh, picture where I asked him to basically just jump up. So he's standing on the ground and I'm asking him to jump up. And I, I will say that the auto mode did such a good job. This is not me snapping the picture. This is how the phone grabbed it by itself. Let's let it focus. And you could see how good the picture looks like. It got not only every part of them good, but also make sure that he was standing up in the air and it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm hopefully gonna be able to put that picture for you guys to look at right here. It's very nice, really, really good. And of course, just gives you the ability of capturing action motion options. Uh, now, obviously it's automatic, so it's doing its own selection of it. You're still able to use the photo button option if you'd like, but it's definitely some of the options that I really like about the camera. Let's go ahead and go outside and I wanna share with you guys a 4K sample on the front camera and the back camera on the Honor Magic 5 Pro. Okay, we're gonna start off with the front-facing camera and one of the biggest things I'll, you'll definitely notice right out of the box is the fact that we are shooting in 4K. 4K 30 frames per second is gonna be the maximum resolution here. And this is actually a step up, more like some of the other devices that we've seen before, like Samsung and some of the companies, you know, even Apple. And the big thing about here is that not every company puts 4K on the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera typically doesn't get a lot of love. A little bit of wind, hopefully you guys still hear me. So let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor on the back where we can shoot 4K 60 frames per second. Okay, now we're using the main sensor on the back we're shooting at 4k 60 frames per second we don't actually have 8k although i don't really feel like that's something or like a feature that's missing that's the biggest thing here is 4k 60 is going to be the best that we can get on the back and 4k 30 on the front this is a quick example of the audio and video from the brand new honor well the honor magic 5 pro now as you heard there with the audio definitely very good performance as far as the front facing camera and the rear facing camera and that makes this experience very nice now for the audio performance that we're getting in here obviously not just the video that we just looked at um, we're looking at essentially the top bounded uh, earpiece as well as a bottom firing earpiece so basically the dual speaker configuration that's going to give us stereo speakers on the honor magic 5 pro i'm going to set the volume to 100 percent this is obviously to give us the loudest experience so you guys can get a good representation and for that we're going to go ahead and share the ilex crindo jumpo by ncs release volume at 100 percent and we're going to get a chance to enjoy the music on these beautiful stereo speakers Now, one thing I will say, when they're sitting on the table, because the speakers are basically firing in both opposite directions, so let's go ahead and put the phone down, they're firing sideways. Your best performance is always going to be when you're holding the phone and enjoying the content on it, because the sound kind of bounces back off of your palm and it basically echoes even louder than the device. And you heard that as I, when I put my hands in the shape at the end of the video, well, the clip that we're looking at, you saw that the sound, or you heard that the sound definitely went louder. It definitely is loud enough for conversation, for video conferencing. Uh, the front facing camera has really good capabilities for producing content and of course sharing across social media. Now I mentioned you guys at the beginning that I'm using Aralo, that's my app, that's how I was able to install the eSIM. But let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about performance when it comes down to gaming and we're going to also start looking at PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile as well, the couple of games that I have installed on here. The first thing I want to mention to you guys is you can see here how beautiful the display, the colors that we have in here, again within the system UI. Let's go ahead and do that because I've been sitting in there idle for some time. But it looks really, really nice. And one thing I wanted to share with you guys real quick is just how beautiful and how crisp in the colors that we have here on this display. It's beautiful. We have options, of course, for gaming, the ability of customizing the experience. Let's go ahead and bring it over. We'll swipe over and we have this nice little game option, game manager that we have in here. Now, we have the ability of customizing the experience between balanced and, of course, game mode, which provides us different profiles to manage the system. The ability of customizing the Do Not Disturb, let's go ahead and leave it up there. Uh, do Not Disturb, uh, Mistouch Prevention, uh, Graphic Boost, of course, a Screenshot, the Screen Recording, and the Settings to be able to customize it. And when you're not using it, obviously, you can customize the, bri uh, the brightness there. You're also able to see, basically, the CPU performance, the RAM performance, and the frame rate that you're running in there. 
really good, very nice customizations that we can do directly for our games when we want to be able to get the best out of the Magic 5 Pro. There's no question that the performance of this device married between the 8 Gen 2, the provided obviously 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage, there's not going to be really an issue at all for us to get the best gaming experiences here. Now, depending on the game, the frame rate is going to differ and depending on the actual developer support, we'll be able to get different performance. But the maximum frame rate that you're able to get is 120 frames per second and you're able to enjoy those games. And one of the things I really enjoy about the 8 Gen 2 is the thermal um, benefits that we have now over last year's 8 Gen 1. It definitely performs way better, more like the 8 Plus Gen 1, meaning when we start seeing the TSMC implementation in there. But again, PUBG, Call of Duty, absolutely no problem. Uh, Genshin Impact, any of the main games that you like to play, it's not going to happen problem. When we talk about gaming, uh, it, this is obviously one aspect of a device. The other aspect that I want to talk to you guys is what does this device do for us as far as multitasking, the ability of using this device for more than just being a, I was going to say just a smartphone. Now we've done this before in the past where we are able to use the Magic Desktop or the Magic OS desktop experience directly on a device like let's say the Next Dock, but also something like let's say even the Rokid Air or the Rokid Max. These are AR glasses that I'm able to use, plug in directly into the uh, Honor Magic 5 Pro. And because it supports video out, not only just screen mirroring, but also the Magic OS, the stop experience, you're able to experience and leverage that in a 16 by nine aspect ratio on whatever system that you're using, either be it an external display or like in the say the next stock as I've shared with you guys in the past, the ability of running Magic OS desktop in there and opening our apps directly from our phone. Now the benefit of using something like this allows us to actually use our device more like a laptop and provides us the ability of tapping into the 5G connectivity as well as the processing power on a unique device like that, making it more so a flexible experience and more productive experience than most devices on the market right now. Very few devices still carry a desktop experience, Samsung still being one of them, and of course Motorola. And Magic US or Magic OS that we have in here provides us that, that really good experience that very few flagships even carry in 2023. Now let's start talking about the camera experience and of course what are the capabilities of the system that we have in here, the triple cameras in the front in the back and of course the main camera on the front. Now the video sample shared with you guys there, you saw how the video looked like, this is absolutely fantastic. The stabilization on this device looks really, really nice as well as I'm sharing with you guys from the Austin airport here in the US where I was traveling with my family for a conference. But the biggest thing I want to share with you guys overall is how capable are these cameras, uh, the capabilities of the color representation, the color processing, the AI options that we have in here built in directly from Honor has been continued year over year and I'm a big fan of their color science and how they process their imagery. But the capabilities of actually using the camera to be able to shoot automatically action scenes is also something that's very new. And as I showed you guys with those pictures of my son doing that jump, it actually captured him in mid-air floating in that perfect pose. And that was obviously something I probably would have been sitting there for 20 minutes trying to shoot and keep hitting the shutter button and never catching it exactly, but also never necessarily getting it in that actual very clear experience. It caught him as he was basically stopping in the air and right about to coming back down to the ground. Um, but other than that, I think as you can see here, uh, low light performance is really nice. I was able to do some uh, shots like that in Austin when we were walking back over one of the nights coming back to the hotel. And of course, the different images here as well as over there. It's definitely a very capable, a very, I would say very flexible camera uh, system that we have in here. If you want to shoot full 50 megapixels, you can go into the high res mode. If you want to be able to do dual video yourself and the front facing and the back facing camera, you have all of those options. And I think that's one of the really nice things. It's a very versatile smartphone that provides us flagship experience because it is a flagship for Honor, but it also provides us unique experiences that you don't find on other flagships in 2023. So with that being said, what are the things that maybe are a little bit of concern to me? Like I'll say a couple of things. Uh, the phone itself is actually very nice, but I do recommend you getting a case. It is definitely a slippery phone when you're holding the material. So that's one of the things I appreciated them including the case in the back. Magic OS has still some things that I wish we would be able to change. And I would think maybe probably one of the things is the ability of switching the swipe down action to be able to bring down the notification panel as opposed to the universal search that they have built in. It's a great function, but for me, I typically like to open up my notification panel. That's literally the number one thing I do. Whenever I get a new device that has this feature, I switch it around. Not that I don't like the universal search, but it's just something that I prefer to use because if I want an app, I typically go look for it or I know and I customize my system for that. But other than that, I think it's definitely very reliable, very nicely improved. 7.1 is definitely very nice. Hopefully we'll see what they have uh, when later on in the year when we see Android 14 coming out. That's still in early beta right now on Pixels, actually alpha if anything else. Uh, but the main benefit here is this is a device that Honor can definitely show all of the capabilities they're able to do in 2023. 
Thank you very much for the support. Thank you to Honor for sending me this device and allowing me to check it out for such a long time. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.